Oh, it's looking good. Coffee's flowing. It's time to get going. Hey, welcome back to Questions Over Coffee. My name's Kevin Smith. It's good to see you again. Want a cup of coffee? Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. If you have a comment or a question, leave in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Today's question is, what should the church's response to this coronavirus epidemic be? I'm going to give you three to four things, depending on how you count the last one, um, to talk about. About this because there is uh, a lot of hysteria going on um, and some of it is genuine fear and some of it is just feeding off the fear of others and uh, making some really um, questionable decisions uh, you know the uh, Toilet paper shortage for one. <laughs> that one just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but there we go. Um, the first thing I would say in this, um, well, let's, let's call it a crisis. Uh, I believe the government is actually calling it a crisis at the moment. Um, so let's call it a crisis. First thing I would say is, church, we need to have confidence in God. God is far bigger and far more powerful than this disease. He is in ultimate control. We do not need to fear. Um, does that mean we will all be uh, safe on the other side of this disease? Uh, that we will not become infected? That is not what that means. We might. But the good news is, Christians, we're safe. If we've been immersed, if we have washed our sins clean and we are walking according to what God wants us to walk, brothers and sisters, we're safe. We got a home waiting for us. Like Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Why? Paul, why? Paul looked at it and said, if I live, I'm fruitful for God. If I die, man, I get to go be with him. That, that's awesome. That is awesome. We all have, have that kind of a an outlook and a confidence in our creator because he is powerful. We don't need to fear. The second thing I would say is we need to pray uh, and specifically pray for wisdom uh, let's consider James chapter 1 we're going to read verses 2 through 8 consider it all joy my brethren when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith, without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We need God's help every day. That just makes sense. You know, um, some decisions are simple decisions. Some decisions are not so simple. You know, uh, some situations are simple situations routine situations some are um, crises like this particular outbreak that we're having in March of 2020 whether it's something simple and routine 
or whether it is something serious, we need God's help. We need his wisdom. Sometimes we see that more clearly than others, that we can't handle it by ourselves. We ought to pray, pray. Ask God to give us the wisdom and discernment that we need to honor him, to make the right decisions, to put us where he wants us. And we need to believe that he will do so because he does. He promised it to us. This was not only a first century promise. We can still pray today asking for God's help and God's wisdom and he will give it to us. There are a lot of decisions that need to be made with this virus um, specifically. Um, at the moment, there is a, uh, a recommendation to keep your meeting groups under 10 people. There's a lot of complications to that. What do we do? How do we do it? You know, uh, things of that nature. Uh, decisions as far as what groceries to buy. You know, how much of a stockpile do I need of food? Forget the toilet paper. You know, but, uh, you know, how much of a stockpile do I need? How can I help those that need help worse than me? You know, things of that nature. God will help us to figure that out. God will help us to stand firm. We need to have confidence in him, and we need to ask him for his help. Number three, or perhaps three and four, depending on how uh, you want to count it, is we need to help one another and love one another. Those two uh, are, in my mind, inseparable uh, because this help is more than just a, a flowing out of the wallet. It, it is a help flowing out of the heart because in many situations, we are putting ourselves in a um, more difficult situation, a more dangerous sometimes, especially for public workers, uh, situation where the virus may be. And we, we need to be careful with that. But let's consider what Paul writes in Galatians chapter six, six through 10. The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Okay, so Paul says, share, love, do good seize that opportunity because by doing that you and I get a chance to point people to Jesus to share his love with them and this is a time when people will listen because people are desperate people are confused people know they need help they know their lives are in danger in many cases and they will listen because of that uh, in many cases. But Paul also says, in that doing of good, Christians, we have a special responsibility to those who are of the household of the faith. We have a special responsibility to make sure that our family, the, our brothers and sisters in Christ, are taken care of. 
that they are provided for that well if they need something we do our best to help them because they belong to the same family that you and I belong to they are covered with the same blood that you and I are, are covered with immersed into the body of Christ clothed with our Savior so what should our response be confidence we need to help one another to bear those fears those hard times we need to trust God we need to know that he is bigger than whatever we are facing we need to pray for wisdom for guidance and we need to love we need to help one another and to love one another and to point people to our Savior so I have a question for you what is your congregation doing to help those that are affected by the coronavirus leave me a comment in the section below don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on questions for coffee thank you for our time together today i look forward to the next time keep pressing forward